I'm Karen McFarlane Holman, PhD. I'm founder of Science Rockstar Kids, an online science program. And I am going to do one of my favorite projects that we do in our science program. It's so easy, it's so fun. So let's get going. Who doesn't like a lava lamp? And it is so awesome to make them at home and it is unbelievably easy. Another thing I want to do, because there are a lot of videos that show how to make a lava lamp at home, but I also want to bring in the chemistry of it. So you can also learn a little bit while you see this awesome phenomenon and just making this really cool at home craft project, but also just uh, sciencey enough that it's extra special. All right, so in terms of the things that you will need, so you'll need some kind of bottle and you will absolutely want one that's see-through. I like ones that are transparent and not shaded a different color and um, that are also vertical. So you can find these um, wherever and, um, and this is a great way to reuse something that otherwise you might be recycling, which is also good for the planet. All right, so you've got your bottle and then part of the What's gonna be in the lava lamp is gonna be water, and we are going to put food coloring in the water, but I am purposely not having you color the water beforehand, which is sometimes done, and there's a reason for that that we will see, all right? And then you will need some kind of vegetable oil, and there are lots of different kinds out there, different shades of yellow or more clear, or whatever, they're all great, they're all gonna work, all right? And we do want Whatever food coloring color you want. I'm choosing red just because it's a lava lamp and so in that lava theme, but you could do any color and it's gonna look awesome. You can also mix colors together too. And the final, this is like the secret ingredient. It's not so secret now, but any kind of effervescent tablet something that when you put it into water, it bubbles. And so something like Alka-Seltzer or any kind of antacid of any brand is gonna work great for this, all right? So a nice thing about this is you don't have to be extra careful with the measurements, but I will say that you want the water part to be in, um, you know, maybe a quarter of it or so, and then the rest is gonna be oil, because where the oil is, that's where the action's gonna be. But you do wanna have enough water that you can get that bubbling going. All right, so we're gonna start out and we're gonna pour the water in, and just so I don't spill at least too much, I'll use a funnel and get our water in. All right, so I've got this, oh, quarter, third, somewhere around there is great, all right? So next, we're not putting in the food coloring yet, not quite yet, we're going to be putting in the oil. So this has water and oil, and I'm gonna use a different funnel. So as we know, water and oil don't mix, right? And you can also pause for a minute as you're doing this and think about what do you expect to happen when you put the oil in? This whole idea of water and oil not mixing, so does that mean it's just gonna hit this like a solid? Well, they're both liquids. Is it gonna mix and stay mixed? Given what we know, we can guess what's gonna happen there, but um, we can also guess which one will float on top. If you have worked with oil and water enough, you'll know the answer to that. But this is just one of those things that you can think about if it is something you haven't thought about before. All right, so we're going to now pour in our oil and we can take a gander at how it's behaving as we pour it in. It's also quite beautiful, I must say. We see those bubbles of the oil falling in. I'm gonna stop for a moment. And it's amazing how quickly it separates. So we have a property here. If we're thinking about, oh, that looks cool. <laughs> if we're going to talk about some chemistry terms here, intermolecular forces and water molecules are polar. They have partial positive ends and partial negative ends, and they're attracting each other. They also have another very strong intermolecular force, hydrogen bonds. And so the water molecules are more stable if they stay together and attract each other. And the same is true for the oil. And the dominant intermolecular force for the oil, since it's 
much less polar, pretty much nonpolar, is going to be London forces. Also known as instantaneous dipole. There, there's lots of different terms for that, but those forces that we see for nonpolar molecules. Okay, so we now have our water layer, our oil layer. Why is the oil on top of the water? Density. The oil is less dense. Most oils are less dense than water. Those liquid oils that we work with in the kitchen. And so we see it floating on top. Okay, so this is the point where I suggest adding in the food coloring. And the type of food coloring I have is this gel type, but there's also the, um, the liquid, they're um, more, uh, less viscous, um, and those work as well. And I'm gonna bring in this and really focus in on what's gonna be happening here so we can take a look. So we have pretty much full separation here, and we're gonna see what happens when we put in a drop of this food coloring. And watch. So watch how it drops down. All right, so you can think about why did it drop down and then why did it kind of stop there at the oil water level and where is that droplet of the food coloring? From this angle, we're not even seeing it. <gasps> so there it went. It sat there for a while at that interface and then it dropped right down. Okay, now let's see if we can see what's happening. This drop, so this is going to look different for the gel type food colorings than it does when you have the, um, the more liquidy type food colorings. You're going, going to see a different kind of effect. And so I do suggest that if you have both to look at both of them. And so we can see down here that glob is just sitting there and it's not dissolving quite yet. All right, so it is so thick that it's not dissolving readily, but we're gonna keep an eye on it. In fact, I'm gonna put in another droplet here and, cause you know, I really want this to be a deep red. Look at those droplets fall and they just sit there. Look at that, they're like little, worms just sitting there at that interface, hanging out. Eh, the one of them dropped. Yeah, okay. So next, we've got, um, and you can also think about the density that, that that food coloring must be. Much more dense than our oil and more dense than the water as well. All right, so those food coloring molecules, those dyes, they must be more dense. All right, now here's our Alka-Seltzer. Okay, so we've got, oh, I might need to break this apart. Okay, so I'm just gonna break it in half and now it should fit. And let's take a look and get our observations going in here. We always wanna make our observations, right? Okay, and while we're at it, let's just see if that food coloring is looking at any different. Oh, it's starting to dissolve slightly, it appears. Okay, so that's telling us that those dye molecules, those must also be somewhat polar if they are then getting drawn into the water. Since the water molecules are polar, if those dye molecules go into the water, they're probably polar too. Okay, so now our Alka-Seltzer tablets. Let's see, we want to be able to see this well, so I'll turn it a little bit here. And drop this in. Okay, so that dropped down. It's starting to bubble as we would expect. Put this other one in there too. All right. So let's think about what is happening here. This Alka-Seltzer. It's bubbling. What's the water doing? How does the water look compared to what it looked like when we started? What's happening with those bubbles that are coming up from the Alka-Seltzer when they hit the oil? 
and we see them going up. And what happens to those bubbles when they get to the top? Then what are they doing? And look at that, we just, we just saw that piece of Alka-Seltzer, it actually floated up. And now it's bubbling around, again, at that interface where we saw something happening with the uh, food coloring right there. And now our Alka-Seltzer tablet is floating there. So it, oh, it must have gotten less dense also. We can, so we can compare this density. And by it floating up, it is no longer a source of creating bubbles down here in the water part because that's what was carrying those bubbles that were coming up from the water and then up through the oil. That's what was giving that lava lamp effect, right? So once we lose that, then sure, we might have a little few little bubbles happening up here, but that Alka-Seltzer, that is dissolving in the water. And that chemical reaction that's happening, that is then releasing carbon dioxide and causing the bubbles to rise. If that chemical reaction isn't happening in the oil, then we're not gonna see much that's happening up there when the Alka-Seltzer tablet has floated to the top, okay? But these bubbles that do come up, float to the top, they're released, and if they are carrying bubbles of water with them that are not attracted to the oil, then they're going to stay, these water bubbles, they're gonna stay as water bubbles all together because the water's attracting itself. And so they're gonna stay as a bubble, getting carried up, getting lifted by the bubbles that are in the Alka-Seltzer. And then once they reach the top, then the gases are released. There's nothing else carrying the water cluster up. So then that bubble, bubble of water falls back down. And so we get this constant movement of the gas lifting those water bubbles up and then the gas is released and then that cluster of water then drops back down. And that's that motion that we get with this type of homemade lava lamp. All right, so this is so cool and, and that you can redo this. So this is something that you could create, this homemade lava lamp, and then you could put the cap on and let it sit for a week and you could come back and just drop in some more alcohol sensor and ta-da, it'll just go again for you and you can enjoy it just as much as you did the last time. Oh, look, there's that piece of alcohol sensor that floated up and it looks like it's getting moved around and it's just bobbing around in there. Very fun. So, like I said, this is something you can do over and over. And in fact, I have, I used a glass jar of this vinaigrette a few weeks ago and it's all ready to go. In fact, we could make another one with this one. Why not? I have enough of this Alka-Seltzer sitting around my box here so we could get a couple of these going so as you can see this one looks like i put in a bit more of the food coloring in there to get it to be a little bit darker this has a wider mouth so i'm just going to drop the whole tablet in and this one because it's been sitting a long time there's a lot more separation. We didn't have any of that mixture. So let's see how this one looks a little bit different. You can also see the ratio is different where there is less oil to water in this ratio here. And I feel like I really like the one with the larger oil ratio because you can see more of that action happening with the bubbles. This is still definitely cool, but I like this one, how it looks better aesthetically. All right, so, so easy to make a lava lamp and so much chemistry you can talk about while you are making it and making observations, seeing what happens when you put the color in, how it separates from the two, lots of things to think about, lots of things to ponder, and lots of things to just enjoy. And I would say the very last step that you could make with creating this lava lamp, thinking about the word lamp <laughs> is that you could set this on top of a lamp that is shining upwards and you could get that effect 
of a lava lamp, exactly that. So that's another fun thing you could do with this. So um, another last thing to mention is that while it's going, so this one's still bubbling, you don't wanna put the cap on. I don't wanna put the cap on this one. While it's bubbling, you just let it go because you want that gas to be able to escape. If you don't, then you will have a pressure build up here and you do not want that. Then this could pop off or who knows. So there's our safety measure is whenever you're having it, acting like a lava lamp with your Alka-Seltzer in there, keep it free, keep it open. And then when it's all done bubbling, that's when you put the cap on and you can put it on your shelf and bring it back out for the next time you want to have a lava lamp. All right, so there you go. Very easy, very fun, lots of science, and I hope you enjoyed it. I would love it if you subscribed and if you like this video, it helps me a lot because I love creating these science videos and that will allow me to make more. So I will see you next time. And until then, don't forget to make time for science.